Welcome to BTG Ministry Show tonight. This show is about men and for men. Ladies, you are welcome too, because you're part of the family. Sit down and watch, and let's get blessed together tonight. Hello, and welcome to the show. We're here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to be talking about the book of Ephesians tonight. And I have a special guest tonight that's going to be talking about the book of Ephesians. Brother Carl Charles. Welcome to the show, man. Welcome Thank you. To the it's show. a pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming down and joining us. Already. Man, what what uh, moved you to kind of wear this kind of outfit, man? Well, bottom line, it's we've all been commissioned. Hmm. Okay, and it's important to accept that commission. Okay. Now there's seven and a half billion people in the world that need to be reminded about what our Heavenly Father said. I see. The great I am. Yeah. So that's how important it is. When we're talking about the book of Ephesians, we're talking about Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. The focus is on wearing the whole armor of God. Oh, I see. So, so, so in other words, this represents the word of God? Yes, the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. I why wear was, this why every day. Why would someone wear that? Well, the thing is this. It's a free gift that God has given to mm -hmm. all of us. It's a spiritual gift. Before you even head out of the house in the morning, you need to put that whole armor on. Okay. The enemy is going to be throwing those darts. So... Before you even get out the bed, hold up that shield. Ding, ding, ding. You're going to hear those fiery darts hitting it because the enemy is relentless. The I enemy see. is constantly attacking us. We are in a battle. We are at war. Okay. So how would, how would one uh, identify? We see you have this initially. You have it on. Yes. But how would I apply it to my life if I didn't have this, this armor that you have on? Yes. Well, how you apply it to your life is this. Remember what the Word is saying. God mm -hmm. gave us the his, the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. So it's something that each one of us has. Okay. Now, how you can put the armor on, mm -hmm. you can basically be taking a shower and put on the helm of righteousness. You can put on oh. the different parts and say this to yourself because you're believing of, on what God has said. So that's why it's important for us to know what the word says. And, and this is the actual scripture when we're talking about Ephesians. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go through that scripture yourself or go through it with family and friends so that we people know the importance of the scripture. Um, we could take a moment, because uh, if people, if our audience is in their Bible, go to the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. chapter six. And right now, what we'll do is we'll start to go down to the actual uh, parts of the armor, which will be uh, going to verse 13. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that ye be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's why it's important for us to be in the word, so we know how we're supposed to operate towards our Heavenly Father and towards each other. So the breastplate, it does what? Well, the, all of these are protections that God has given us. Mm -hmm. These are all defensive. Each part of the armor is to protect us from attacks of the enemy. Right, so but what, what, does the, what does it actually protect? What part of the body the breastplate? Well, the breastplate protect? is going to protect uh, the core, mm -hmm. where all your vital organs and everything are mm -hmm. at, if you're looking at armor in the, uh, in the natural, like mm -hmm. we're wearing now. And then um, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Mm -hmm. The importance is knowing that when you are lifting that shield that God has given you, it's quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked. So you're, he's not supposed to have dominion over you or victory over you. So the shield blocks? Yes, all darts? of the darts. The word tells us it blocks all of the darts. My so no, God. So no matter what the enemy is doing, hold up the shield that God has given each one of us and it will block just like how it says here in the word. It doesn't say it will block some, it says it will quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. So what represents the fiery darts? Well, the fiery darts would be uh, temptation, mm -hmm. uh, the enemy trying to lead us into sin. Okay. Uh, the enemy, remember, the enemy is called the great accuser mm -hmm. of the brethren. So he's going to try to remind us of something. Or someone, say, for instance, had a drug problem, yeah. and, they, and they've, you know, they've been walking with Christ for the last 20 years. They're no longer, they've, they've made a 180-degree turn from that lifestyle, okay. and they're living differently. The enemy tries to remind the person to try to drag them back into that type of situation. Wow. Try to remind them that, that their walk and their spirituality is not real. Mm -hmm. So the, the enemy is constantly trying to get us to believe a lie or reject the truth. 
that's his job. Both have the same uh, effect. So mm -hmm. that's why it's important that we constantly remind each other of what our Heavenly Father has said, what Yah has said, and stand on what the Word says. So we have to be stewards of the Word. When we read this Word, it may not talk to us right then and there. It's important because remember, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given to us okay. as our moment-by-moment -moment guide and teacher. So there's a lot going on with this process. God's given us a lot of tools and even one of his spirits himself to keep us on track so we can be kingdom bound. So in other words, so, daily, I need to put on the helmet of salvation. That's right, daily. Protect my thoughts. Exactly. Protect my vital organs up here. Exactly. The breastplate. Yep, the breastplate of righteousness. Protect my heart. That's right. The shield of faith. Yes, we have to have the shield. The fiery darts the every all, day. all the fiery darts. See, that's what's key. And, and that's one thing that I, that I really learned by doing this, to actually hammer this scripture into the leather. I, I had to do it one letter at a time. But the thing is, is that key, what spoke to me was that all the fiery darts, not some. Oh. So he's given us the tools to deflect all of those darts. So in this, our high priest, Jesus Christ, uh, biblical Christ, the Christ, we follow his example by being able to speak the word. When the, when, he, when the devil attacked him and tried to tempt him, he told him what was written. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing we're supposed to do in spiritual warfare. We're wearing this armor, but we need to speak the word and remind him what remind was written. Remind him what the word says. Exactly, about. because he believes all scripture and is subject to all scripture. So, so that's what, an advantage we have over. What are some activities you got involved with wearing this outfit? Well, I wear it every day, wherever I go. Every day? Every day, wherever I go. Um, one of the last community events I did here was at Northwest School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. They had a career day. So basically, I went over there for career day. We had okay. 450 middle schoolers that wanted to learn how to be a professional artist. I see. So I had conversations with them, gave out some different art items to help encourage them and give them an advantage to move forward as an artist. Wow. Um, I, um, right here in Charlotte also, on Central, Rita's... Uh, first day of spring. Mm -hmm. So I've taken picture of that little snow cone <laughs> dude over there. Okay. So do a lot of community things. And like I said, for me, constantly being in the community is important. And wearing the armor, it speaks to people. It so al it'll is, is it other little projects you have for the children that may not be able to identify with this? Yes, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Making leather bracelets. There's a lot of different things that we okay. can make. Um, I mean, I got a bracelet here. It's a scriptural bracelet, but a lot of children, I mean, we'll do name bracelets or we could put their school bracelet into leather. Um, bookmarks have promoted reading and things like that. So it's wide open what you can do with leather because it is, it's a canvas for me as an artist because I work a lot of different mediums. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that uh, the script, scripture, whether it speaks to the person or not, it's relevant for every generation, for every season. It is. So. That's great because people mm -hmm. have their own personal scripture they believe in. That's they correct. Their own personal scripture they want, they want to, you know. Take ownership of. A lot yes. of people, John 3.16, I mean, it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. much any scripture that's out there. And like I said, what I've been experiencing is with middle schoolers, it's been 10 to 1 for scriptural bracelets. Wow. So, so a lot of young people are focused on a scripture that they're taking ownership of and something that they're, they've committed to memory and something they're putting in their heart. See, we're supposed to be not just speakers of the word, we're supposed to be doers of the word. Doers of the word. So the younger that they learn what the word says and they become more compliant with it and their focus is with it, they're living it, it doesn't confuse the world because the world gets confused when a person that calls themselves a Christian is not bearing the fruit of being a Christian. Well, I want to so, thank you, man, because, you know, okay. you, your level of professing Jesus Christ, I mean, just be able to wear that every day. Yeah, it doesn't, really, yeah. really sends out a statement. I hear you. Uh, well, you know, we have to wear it and we don't, you know, people don't see our armor like you display it, but I you're actually you. displaying, you know, what practically what we're supposed to be wearing. Exactly. You know, Everyone's by knowing the word of God and trusting God and, and, and reading that scripture and say, well, make sure my mind, That's uh, right. the word of God, Help me, you know, I read the word to help me think properly. Exactly. It renews the mind. You know, right. It renews my mind. That's it holds right. back the negative thoughts and what exactly. the enemy want to speak. So that's, that's taking care of that area. Exactly. And the heart also. Exactly. So the word of God 
covers us in every area of our body. Exactly. Every area. And that's paramount that we, we do that every day. It is. It man, is. I, I want yeah. to salute you, man, and keep doing the great work, man. You are touching somebody. Thank you. Know, you. Uh, the so-called Christians that have been around for a while, and you've been affecting their life. So thank you it's for being important. on the show. Thank you. And thank God you. God bless you, man. Keep doing the great work. God bless you as well. Don't go away. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right. God bless you as well. Yeah. So glad you're enjoying the show thus far. For additional information, run over to my Twitter account at BTG Ministries 09. We'll do you good. So I'm going to work right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to have an exciting time tonight. We have Mr. Brock here tonight going to tell us about men's attire. He's going to tell us what's going on in the Queen City and how we should be dressed. Uh -oh. uh, Mr. Brock, tell us a little something about yourself. Uh, my name is Robert Brock. I am a stylist, actor, and uh, co-salesperson at, at Dillard's uh, North Lake Mall. Um, and uh, that's the, the gist of what I do. Um, great, great. Well, tell the host tonight, uh, bring them up to, up to date on the styles and what, what, how we should be dressed now. Okay. Uh, we're looking at two different age groups. We're looking at the... Uh, 30 to 40 year old, then we're looking at the over the 50. Gotcha. And, and, and the over 50, because now the 50 year old is not the new 30. Right. So kind of bring us up to date what we should be doing, how we should be modeling this thing. Um, well, actually, the thing is always age appropriate. And I, I will say, based on certain ages, um, I don't think you have to box yourself in um, if mm -hmm. something is too young or if it's too old. The fitted look is in right now as far as pants and suits um, are concerned. So a lot of people are into that regardless of their age. Um, mm -hmm. The millennials really, really love the fitted look. And uh, as far as the older people, we, um, some like that too. You don't want all the blou blousy within the suits and your shirts and stuff like that. More of a tailored look. So yes. and very neat and clean. And uh, so that's something that everybody's embracing right now. So I think that's really something to keep in mind when you're when you're shopping. Oh, wonderful! So how so how do we know we we, we you know we're in the trend, we're in the style? How do we know that we we we're wearing, wearing the stuff that's right. on in style? Well, or are we just doing what we want to do? Right. Well, I usually love GQ magazine. Uh, mm. Of course, as far as the TV shows that you see, are always a uh, good indication, and the magazines, uh, as I said and um, commercials, uh, even walking in the malls when you see the displays in the windows, pretty much gives you a head up of what's going on and what's pretty much in, uh, in style. So you can pretty much gauge by that. Mm -hmm. And I would mm -hmm. suggest trying stuff on before you buy it just to see if you actually like it to make sure that it's something that you want, you know, it looks good on you. And I think once you've got it on, men don't hate to try on clothes. Mm -hmm. um, so usually, I, th I think it's a good good idea just to go ahead and try it on, um, and then once you go there and, and find that it's a good look for you, you're set. Okay. What do you think? Some good styles, uh, name brands that uh, would be uh, good for people. Uh, I know we have the Italian look. We have mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff made in Spain and Tokyo. Right. What? Well, Italian designers are always great because mm -hmm. it's more of a fitted look. Uh, any European designers usually are pretty much fitted clothing so it's more of a tailored look so you can always go that route shirts wise i find that the kenneth cole slim fit shirts mm. are re really really popular have a little stretch in them and they fit really really great um, because like i said when you wear a jacket or suit or sweater um, you don't get all the extra fabric in your waist because it's a fit fitted shirt not, it's not really, really tight, tight, but it's just a good fit, you know, sh shoulders and close in the waist. So that's just a great way to go as far as Kenneth Gold is concerned with the fitted. Oh, okay, okay. My, me, myself, I don't really like the fitted style. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something in between? The, right. the, the big style, the old style, and, and the fitted style, is there something right. in between those two? So we can kind of graduate, graduate and gotcha. use. Mm -hmm. I would probably say fitted. There's there's slim fit, mm -hmm. there's fitted, and then there's the standard. Most of the standard shirts were cut just are very boxy, 
Mm -hmm. So you, you just, just blouse, there's just material everywhere. Um, so in the between, you would have the fitted, and that's not as fitted as the slim fit shirt, which more of the younger or the athletic guys like. So you're right in between. It just takes out a little of the extra material. So I would probably say just the, the fitted. I see. Is there a certain style of shoes? Which way would this fit? Uh, um, so? Shoes are pretty much uh, one way that we can express ourselves, and n mm. I notice now whether it's gray or mm -hmm. navy, uh, the brown shoe or cognac color okay. shoe is a great way to go. A lot of the millennials and younger crowd love the brown shoe, oh. um, so that is a good way to go. Most people think you kind of should do the black if you're wearing a gray suit, uh, navy suit, but. The brown really, really works. So it really depends on, I would say, your um, profession. You know, uh, it, it depends on where you're going. Um, but but I, it's always a good expression of how you want to express yourself. Okay, okay. So we see the guys wearing jeans a lot nowadays. Mm -hmm. How do we hook those up with, 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 with shoes? Jeans are very, very uh, trendy, but the fitted look is really, really in right now. And as far as the jeans are concerned, I will say to keep in mind, if you're going to wear jeans as a dress up option, mm -hmm. always go with the darker wash. And it's a good clean look. You got, you can wear it to work on a, on a Friday and leave and go directly out. Oh. Um, but yeah, the dark, darker jean is always the great way to go with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Wow. Yeah, because they're wearing the jeans with, for work, for <laughs> dress, for church. Mm -hmm. And uh, are they wearing the fitted jacket with the fitted jeans, or are they yeah. wearing a different type of jacket? Both. Uh, actually, yeah, the fitted, yeah, because you, you mostly, like I said, the fitted look is in, so you've got the fitted jeans. Levi's has a ton of styles of jeans, so that's the thing. You may spend an hour or so trying on a jean mm. now versus back in the day you only that's had so <laughs> two or three pair uh, or fits. Now you've got so many. you got an athletic fit, you got a slim fit, you got a skinny fit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so we we wearing these small ties with this mm -hmm. slim suit. That's it. Yet again, that's the thing that that's uh, based on your preference. Um, ties are one, uh, are the main way that men have to express um, our personalities. If you mm. notice, women always have shoes and handbags okay. and okay. hats and all that kind of stuff. The, we always have that tie. And mm. versus the tie and maybe a pocket square. Right. It's just a good way for us to express our personality, just to give us that pop of color and, you know, and show our personality. So, But as far as the slim ties are concerned, um, the younger millennials, I would say millennials, uh, slimmer fit guys, they like the smaller ties. They're kind of trendy to me, and mm -hmm. I think um, the professionals really don't like the, the slim tie, but yet again, it's your preference and right. based on your personality and, and what look you're going for. So you always tell them the story when you put your outfit together. Oh. So that's the thing. If you ever, you know, if you want to get an idea of how to put something together, it depends on where you're going. If you're going out to a party, you're going to work, you're going out to the movies, whatever you, you're going on a date. Mm -hmm. So you always tell them the story when you when you're putting your outfit together based on your color, your oh. styles, all of it, and it just flows really, really well that way. So are uh, the the bow ties? I like the bow ties. Mm -hmm. Bow ties uh, more so than I do the skinny tie. Mm -hmm. So is the bow tie more for fashion for going to work or going out on a casual date or going to church? Or? Bow ties are in right now. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's kind of into the bow tie thing right now. You have, um, of course, those that don't know how to tie bow ties, go with the uh, pre-tied tie and yet again the bow tie is there's an art to tying the bow tie which is tricky but once you learn how to tie that you have something that you, you you've learned and and you have for a while uh, but I, I would encourage everybody I'm in the process of learning I, I've been selling clothes for years mm -hmm. and have never mastered the 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 tying of the of the tie Okay, okay, so you want, you want yeah. to try some of the ties? Got to. So, yeah, so what we have here, you've got the polka dot tie, which is basic standard tie-wise. 
you can go that route just based on your personality. So that looks like a Saturday tie. You're yeah. stepping out <laughs> or Friday evening tie. You're stepping out, uh -huh. you know, and uh, you're not going to work, but you know, right. you're making a statement, you know. It depends. In your, yeah. in your, in your crowd, uh, let a woman catch you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. That's what the kind of tie that looks yeah. like. I might be wrong. Yeah, you know? no, actually, you're right. You're, either way, you can, you can do a white shirt with this, blue shirt such as I have on, or you could go with a gray shirt. Mm -hmm. um, there you got the stripes, which is more professional, banker, or something like that. I you look can, outdated. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that's the thing about ties. That's one of the things you, you, you think are outdated, but then you, I've got a flower tie that I had over 20 years or so. Mm. I get so many compliments <laughs> off of that tie, and I was like, you'd be surprised at how okay. old the tie is. So it's almost like a vintage piece of, uh, of, 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 of attire that you can always bring back. Always bring if back. you notice, always styles always repeat. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, and then you've got, I'm always a pattern guy. I love patterns. So that might be a little bit, you know, some people don't care for patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you mentioned the slim tie. So that's. Yes. Yeah. And then based on what your model was wearing, you th that would be a great look. I yeah. love that pattern yeah. and the color coordination, yeah. mm -hmm. but I don't like the smallness of the tie. Gotcha, gotcha. But this here, uh, yeah. you put the right common, the yeah. right suit on, this here will pop. Right, you got your earth tone, so you're earth tone guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so that, that I, I love the Burberry, yeah. the Burberry background, gotcha. that kind of pattern. And Burberry's there's good. another pattern, as I said, I'm a pattern guy, so I love to mix patterns. I'll do a pattern shirt sometime as well. And w yeah. A yeah, okay. Well, that's that's great, man. We, we we thank God for the bottle we have today. Yeah, he did a great uh, job. He's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, he's making a statement. So, men, here you have it. The information on what to do when you go to the store, mm -hmm. and make those decisions, man. You want to when you get dressed, you want to look look great. You want to look a. Uh, you you want to feel the image that you want to project. Right. So we we thank and praise God for the. For the Mr. Brock, Mr. Brock out here tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, educating us on how we can dress right. and what's the best thing to do to wear it. I can't see you. I, can't see you. I think you want to take a break. Thank you for watching the show. Remember to tune in next week at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. And be blessed. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Hello? What's going on? I ain't doing nothing on chill. I'm over here with my partners. What's that? What's that? Nah, man. I ain't even trying to hear that right now, man. Shit. Yeah. All right. Well, bye. Yeah. I get that when I get that. Good and